March 7th, 2022 marks the 30th anniversary of the first broadcast of the Sailor Moon anime. To honor the occasion, a group of Redditors, including ourselves, has decided to re-watch the entire original series from start to finish. This is the Grill Scouts Watch Sailor Moon, episodes 1 through 7. Hi, I'm Borealis, aka The Literal Grill. And I'm Rin. I'm Kai. And we are the Grill Scouts, and of course we are watching all of Sailor Moon. Uh, this time we watched uh, episodes 1 through 7. And uh, I figured we could all at least start off talking a little bit about our history with Sailor Moon. Because when I saw this come up online as like a cool Reddit, let's rewatch Sailor Moon thing. I was really excited because, you know, it was a big part of nostalgia for me as a kid. Uh, what about you, Kai? What are your Sailor Moon memories? So I would go to my friend Connor's house and watch cartoons for several hours. Like, I think that it was every Thursday was the special day for watching cartoons at Connor's. Um, and then sometimes also at daycare, we saw the four kids dub. Um, so that left me with some kind of confused feelings about cousins. That is extremely fair. Um, <laughs> which I will say rewatching it has been nice. We're watching it with the new dub and not the super old one. So there's not going to be cousins and stuff I'm told in the future. We're nowhere near that point yet, but the voice quality, while I miss some of the more extreme accents on the characters, I admit the voice work is way better in this version. But heck, what about you, Ren? What is your uh, first memory of watching Sailor Moon? Well, I was pretty late to it. Um, I wasn't really aware of anime in general until high school. And the first time I saw Sailor Moon was probably about a month ago. But, uh, oh, oh, wow. Yes. That's exciting. Yeah, this is so this is all cool. new and fresh. <laughs> yep. Dang, see, that makes this even cooler. Oh, gosh. Because, see, I can remember watching it as a kid, like, you know, back when satellite TV was a thing. You, know, you put that giant mm -hmm. dish in your back of your yard and you could pick up however many channels for free, you know? Like, oh. But, yeah, I haven't really watched it again until... Well, now so you know this is going in like with some hard nostalgia goggles on but it's it's so cool that at least one of us is like really fresh to the series yeah. well let's get i into should this. also uh, i should ahead. also mention um before i get too far into things that my friend megzy will hate me if i don't mention her megzy who has a podcast um called let's be legendary wrote her thesis on sailor moon and um is great um that's it <laughs> awesome <laughs> hi megzy <laughs> well heck then now i guess we can go on we've got seven different episodes to talk to or to talk to talk about today um we can start with season one episode one the crybaby Usagi's beautiful transformation. Usagi su 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 I gosh, really, last name, Tsukino. Tsukino! Hey, I know, I, I guess I never thought about her last name before. I've only ever known about Usagi. Meets a talking cat who reveals the dark forces are threatening the innocent. Usagi is transformed into Sailor Moon, a guardian who fights for justice. And love! Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. So this can't is the... Uh, this you is can't forget about episode. love, Allie. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to forget about love. <laughs> Look, I'm just reading the... Here's the little, like, here's what the episodes are about, okay? We can we can thoroughly discuss the power of love and its themes in Sailor Moon in episode one if necessary. <laughs> See, like She loves her friend who doesn't have a Bronx accent. Ah, that is true. Rewatching this with the new dub, because see, Ren, you won't know this, but like, one of her friends in the original dub has like a really intense Bronx accent, and the cat has like a really intense British accent. So like, it's uh... kind of weird <laughs> watching this now and being like, whoa, the new dub is it's so much slicker and better. But like, it's... there's a lot of weird localization things with the older four kids dubs, like Yu Gi Oh. They canonically live in where exactly it's like I, I don't know but I know they changed the stuff around and of course the shadow realm instead of dying and everything and, but yeah so it's kind of neat to see something that's at least a little 
closer to what the comic was supposed to be. Like, I will admit, though, episode one, saving the day with, I know we had to mention this one, just crying sonic radio hair bun tears. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I mean, okay, this is going to be weird because, you know, as the as the retro watcher, the nostalgia, seeing the whole, this is Sailor Moon, you know, it's, it's built up in your head a little bit. I forgot how much of a crybaby she was. <laughs> like, and it's kind of silly because it's a huge part of her character, but it's just like, she does cry a lot in this series, even just in the first few episodes. Very true. I think that it's really cool, though, because, like, a lot of later Magical Girl anime and manga things, they don't have characters act, like, that childish. Um... And, like, they'll do things where, like, they look a lot younger, but they act a lot more adult, which is really weird to me. Yeah. Yeah, that is really... I agree, that is really odd. Well, see, I know it's just the first episode, so I don't know if we have tons of comment. Do we want to move on to our thoughts on episode two, which is, you know, punishment awaits. The house of fortune is... Oh, gosh, it's too long. They don't show the full name. Oh, how dare hey, they? I, before we move on to different episodes, I want to talk about the backgrounds and the watercolor and the gouache. It is so heckin' pretty. And, like, I love it. I, I can't blame you. I mean, you go to watch something old from, you know, the 70s, right? But, like, it really is just so... I don't know. Not the, did I say 70s? I hope I did. The 90s. Oh, God. I'm not that old. But you go back and watch something from the 90s, and it's, it's such a feel, you know? Like, I know the joke is they don't make them like they used to, but, like, that hand animation and stuff is just beautiful. It's also just, like, the 80s and 90s color scheme thing, where you've got the pink to blue gradients and all of that jazz. I... I'm very, very enamored, and I love it so much. It is a vibe, and I kind of like that now we're starting to put that back into our digital art. Like, for a while, when we moved to more digitized works, we kind of muddied things around in, like, a lot of brown and gray, and now we're going like hey color is nice again i can agree with that and i mean it's not like our video background here or anything has the same blues and pinks because that's such a great color scheme but i mean like seriously though it's it's really beautiful it's nice to see it be a whole thing again i i, I... To look up the uh the timing and this came out i believe seven years before the transgender pride flag became a thing but it's true. Huh. I wonder if there was some inspiration there, or the very, very obvious symbolism of pink and blue. And <laughs> you know, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I, I gotta wonder because, like, magical girl transforming stuff. I mean, a lot of trans people and just queer people in general love Sailor Moon, right? When it first came out, so that's heck. That's really interesting. What if Sailor Moon inspired the trans pride flag? Well, yeah, I, I mean, I. I think that it's more likely that it's the the whole like very obvious symbolism of pink and blue being sort of culturally associated with Hi. boys and girls. Hi. But they, they do all of those memes on Twitter or wherever else nowadays where they like color pick the pride flags off of people or whatever. So they could do a trans pride color picked Sailor Moon. It would work. I have already seen it. It's been done several times. It's wonderful. See, exactly. So there you have it. All trans pride flags were inspired by Sailor Moon. Don't fact check me. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, episode two, Punishment Awaits, the House of Fortune, is the Monster Mansion. Customers who had their fortunes read in a certain shop begin to act violent, including Gurio Umino, a boy who has a crush on Usagi. And I just have to say, this one, I know that this is because it's made for television, but the fully grown teacher woman having panties with just a smiley face on the butt, 
low tier panty buying. I'm just saying. I mean, she should have been flashed anyway, but like, come on. You're a fully grown woman. You can do better than smiley face in the middle of the butt. <laughs> True. I know these are the very important, most important topics of our time. Wait, wait. Was the first episode the gem episode or was it the second one? The first episode is the gem one. The second one is where they get all fortune telling. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, but there's I still haven't moved on from the first episode. The first episode is Sailor Moon fights consumer capitalism. <laughs> okay, you're not necessarily wrong, though. A lot of the schemes in the show are kind of just like, we're going to exploit something in capitalism and trick a bunch of people and then like, boom. It's, it's usually girls. Although, I will say that in this episode, it's boys are tricked into exploiting women and harassing them. Ah, oh, isn't it so great? <laughs> uh. I, I disagree, but I kind of <laughs> do love the idea that, like, you're already getting into this whole thing and, like, you know, at the time that this was coming out, or even being localized in the United States, we had things where there were, like, trials for people on the grounds of sexual harassment and people were saying things about how, like, that's just something that women should deal with working in places and, like, if men aren't allowed to sexually harass people in the workplace, then what are they allowed to do with women in the workplace? And, like, yes. it's it's kind of cool to be like, no, this has nothing to do with love or affection. This is people only caring about their own feelings. And that's pretty great. Yeah, and to be fair, by the end of the episode, our main character guy, you know, crushing so hard on Usagi is like, yeah, once he learns what he's done, he's, he's got serious regrets. So, like, you know, yeah, yeah. to give him the tiniest bit of credit possible. Like, <laughs> I mean, he was also, of course, magically tricked into being an asshole, but like, it's it's kind of neat. Kind of an asshole to begin with, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, you're not wrong. That's kind of fair. <laughs> Umino is definitely special. Oh, gosh, yeah. Like, it, it is interesting, though, because, like, you know, it's it's also so silly, and, I mean, I should remember this, too, but just how slow drip the, like, here are all the things Sailor Moon can do, because, like, I know I did a tiny bit of research before this. Like, the first 40 or so episodes are actually only based on, I think it was three or four of the original novels so like they stretched it out mm -hmm. so she you know she only gets like new powers or new anything interesting like so slowly and half the time the cat is just like i'm going to teach you how to do this whole thing all over again thank you luna thank you for helping stretch episodes <laughs> i so revolutionary girl utna is my favorite anime and tv show in general and I just love the little canned bits that get repeated every single episode. It's <laughs> it's wonderful. I I'm a big fan. Oh gosh, yeah, that '90s anime. We can't afford everything, so we have to just repeat it as much as we can and reuse everything possible. They get a lot of use out of all of the just many scenes in general, with possibly different audio, but. Oh gosh, yeah, exactly. Like, it is kind of amazing how much they managed to repeat, because I was expecting the transformation sequences, but, you know, because obviously every episode, but there's, like, tons of little things here and there that they managed to pull out, and it's it's just really cool. You know, it was expensive drawing by hand back then. You had to, had to use everything you could. I will say that one thing that I kind of really miss about that cheaper style of animation is that a lot of the time you end up getting characters in silhouettes when it isn't necessary to get all of the details of their face. And it's really, really pretty and cool looking. It's the anime equivalent of the old Silent Hill games having the fog. It's not foggy, you know, because like they like wanted it to be that terribly foggy at first. It's 
because they literally couldn't render things at a distance, but in anime form. Like, he forced having to do things different, but it looks really cool. Just all of the times that Sailor Moon breaks onto a scene and, like, she's purple and there's a light behind her, it's just, mwah, chef's kiss. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, talking about lights, as silly as it is, there's a lot more just generally flashing lights in this than I expected. I don't have photosensitivity or anything, but, like, holy crap. So much more than I remembered. Uh, yeah, there were seizure warnings sometimes. That makes sense. I guess we didn't get those in the rewatch. Uh, dang. Shame, shame on you, Hulu. Shame on you. Well, heck, are, are we ready to talk about Talk Radio, episode three? The mysterious sleeping sickness protects the girls in love where all the girls in town are tuning into a late-night radio program that reads out love letters sent in by listeners, and a strange sleeping sickness is plaguing the town that puts many people to sleep. I'm, I'm still on the topic of the teacher's panties. Okay. I think, okay, I think that it's to maintain that it's kind of, you're not supposed to be super duper, like, horny or upset by right it's just like this is supposed to be goofy i mean yeah i guess that is true but i mean you know still that lady i'm just saying <laughs> okay no though but i get it in an, in an animation sense too because in the world of anime or manga where there's so much fan service to try to make it very clear that you know this is what we're doing i guess that makes a lot of sense although the 90s were less heavy on the fan service than we are at today Oh gosh, that's true, yeah. At, at least not probably in anime, unless you were watching, like, stuff really made for it, you know, which is, that's the kind of stuff that didn't usually hit, at least the U.S. to my knowledge. Who knows, maybe I'll, I'll learn differently. I mean, there's definitely some ecchi and hentai that ended up hitting the U.S. It's more of a matter of, like, there's just more distinct genres and there wasn't the whole thing where in an effort to get syndicated there would be fan service that was put out for just trying to get more eyeballs on things as much i suppose that's fair i mean to be i mean looking back then too though i only watched a, a very few shows from the 90s i mean i would have gone back and watched a few like this but you know it's not like i had tons to compare with there was like sailor moon and dragon ball and whatever was on toonami at the time i guess there was that sexy sexy ham taro you know mm, hamsters big adventures <laughs> hey, we did service. we did see we did see that whole thing about the hamster just recently about the hamster that is very very rough yeah, and, and it was like Enchiru or something like that. Uh, Shoutouts to Saber Spark, who made a video on this and will definitely probably never see this podcast. But it was a really interesting video. But um, yeah, um, Magical Night Talk Radio. Uh, to be fair, this is the first episode, if I remember right, where she gets to use like her magic powers and she becomes an... Uh, what was it? A, a a beautiful or attractive radio star or something like that? Like, because I remember gorgeous, Luna, gorgeous, oh, news gorgeous. gorgeous news host. Yeah, there we go. Because I remember Luna just being like or really, newscaster. Really... Gorgeous newscaster. See, and, that's and she it. almost pulls it off too. Although, can we stop for a second to talk about Jadeite? I mean, of course we can. <laughs> Jadeite, of course, is not as cool as Tuxedo Mask, who is, I will maintain, like, masculinity as interpreted by a lesbian, <laughs> and as such perfect. Uh, I feel but, like you might be slightly biased towards Tuxedo Mask. You know... You know, I just, you gotta, you gotta hold out for those non-binary icons. <laughs> I suppose that's fair. 
I mean, of course, no one else here knows, but I know how much Kai loved Tuxedo Mask. We've actually seen one of the live stage play musicals, and I, I can understand the interpretation of masculinity as was like viewed in the most like feminine framing after seeing the girl who acted as uh, Tuxedo Mask in that. Because like, dang, just the tossing roses down and fluttering his cape and being like believe in yourself Usagi Sailor Moon yes throwing a rose one time and leaving without doing anything else helpful <laughs> just gotta say something cool first though too that's essential oh that is true he does have to say something very cool that's that's why we love him <laughs> I know there's the meme of like, but you didn't do anything. <laughs> and I mean, in these first few episodes, minus like minorly distracting the villains, maybe once now and then, that's that's all he does for real. Pretty much. But I mean, that's wonderful too. It's just so good. He likes Sailor Moon a lot, and it's great. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Oh. So, you know, I can't remember. Uh, was he even actually in the whole Sleeping Sickness episode? I thought she like, mostly took care of that one by herself. I don't remember. Because um, I, I know but... there was like one in particular that the whole thing was even Luna was like, he won't always be there to save you. You sometimes have to do things on your own. I can't remember if that was that episode or not now. Me neither. I don't know. But we're not talking about J.I. and his yes, I do. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Luki, you started talking so about... Feel their energy. I must give J. Dyke credit for just how much work he puts into plans that never turn out. Like, just creating an entire illegitimate radio program. That's That's some dedication. Yeah, and somehow, like, all of the people who should be running the thing at midnight, no one ever looks into this? Like, oh, yeah, we never <laughs> run this thing. Oh, don't worry. Like, no one ever just shows up at midnight. No boss is like, I'll stay up late. Jay Knight's like, he's got some Nobody skills. censors community radio. <laughs> we don't know if it's community radio. It seems like it's a pretty, like, big organization radio thing. It's a big building for sure. Yeah, you know what, though? Yeah, that's a good point for Jade Eight too. Even in, like, the fortune-telling episode, overnight, an entire full-blown decorated business? Like, holy <laughs> shit. Like, how much energy goes into these productions versus how much does he get out of them? Because I have difficulty yeah. believing that he gets an equal amount out that he's putting in. Oh, that's Not to point. be too critical, but yeah, that, that's quite an investment there for not a whole lot of payout. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I guess I didn't know. I never thought of it, but that's kind of smart. I I'm guess I guess they maybe can't take the energy or whatever from the evil monstery people to give to their evil overlord, maybe? Maybe that's why this still mm -hmm. is kind of cost-benefits? They do specify human energy. Mm, that's, true. that's true. They do. They do also really seem to like energy from teenage girls, which uh, is very. Um, I mean, I think that it could be a statement on how exactly like there's a lot of different things that prey on the activity of teenage girls and sort of are like. You know, there's various groups that, like, run off of teenage girls, like boy bands, the makeup industry, like, all sorts of things basically are like, hey, teenage girls, don't you want to buy into this? And teenage girls are like, yeah, sure, because of where they are growing up. I heard a cat. <laughs> this would be Samuel L. Jackson. Um, Hi, Samuel she Jackson. is a baby. <laughs> she has much love in her heart and much rage in her voice. <laughs> um, you know, though, uh, jumping off your point a little bit there, Kai, like, 
honestly, heck that like episode to episode arrangement for a moment. Cause like so many of these things, it, it really is true. I mean, like it's not just cause I mean, of course we talked about, there was an episode with, you know, the young boys are also getting tricked or whatever. Right. The fortune tellers, but like a lot of the things really are just like, Okay, that that's it. It's when Sailor Moon says the line of like, "How dare you, like, it, like do whatever and like, to to like trick these girls and stuff like that." And it's like, I guess I hadn't thought of it. It is almost like it's the worst thing that anyone could ever do. I know it's just like it's like taking these things and like teaching people a lesson of like, "Hey, if people do this to you, that's bad," you know. And that's kind of neat. Like, how dare you use adorable like pets to trick people? Or, like, how dare you use, like, this whole physical fitness thing. Although, let me tell you, that episode with the getting in shape thing, holy crap, there's some bad, bad fat shaming in that Wait episode. on that. Wait, yeah. yeah, a lot to get Spoilers. Oh, God. Look, for it's the... next episode. <laughs> Look, it's the next one. And I, again, though, like, I was just, I said, like, skipping that for a little bit, the episode by episode playback, just to be like, at least in these initial episodes, like, minus yes, that there is a monster and we know that there's this underlying evil right like a lot of what happens really is just these are bad things that people do to girls sometimes and like this is bad and i am going to punish you you know in the name of the moon yeah for love and justice (sighs) but see now i can definitely sneak it in so that episode with all of the fat shaming son of a gun is that bad like I know it's even for the '90s. Maybe it's like not I definitely for the, '90s, in the '90s. It is dang. pretty progressive, but the '90s were certainly. I don't know if either of you remember, but the thing that ended up happening in the '90s and more in the 2000s is the term "heroin chic." Oh uh, yeah, I've at least heard of that. Your clothes were supposed to hang off of you, like. The trend was you get skinnier and skinnier and your clothes sort of dangle off of you. Like a lot of pants were designed deliberately not to fit you. And like even in children's clothing, like I. There all of everybody's pants were supposed to be sagging and like girls were supposed to do the whole whale tail thing, right? But, like, it was, like, just... Just? It was just... There... I mean, it's kind of continuously been going on throughout my life where there's been this anti-fat movement that is specifically targeted at women. Oh, yeah. And it's just, like, it's not about health. It's not about being healthy, because if it were about being healthy, it wouldn't be the case that all of these crash diets that, you know, eliminate stuff from nutrients from your intake would be being promoted it's about a specific beauty standard that isn't really attainable you know that's really fair i mean of course in the episode itself i mean they're literally like sucking the energy and fat out of people until they're i mean so does fen fen i mean yeah exactly like it's it's not too far off and i will say for one thing luna holy crap what the f- what the heck, cat? You are a jerk in yeah. this episode, and it was... so shout outs to the arcade guy for being the only reasonable person there and seeing this young <sighs> teenage girl and not trying to like shame her into being thinner and letting her enjoy food. Very true. And like taking her to a hospital when she's feeling ill from not eating, like arcade guy is the real MVP of this episode, like. Oh, yeah, just by far. Gosh, it's also of note too that when Luna is like, "Oh, you know, you should be careful not to go too far in the other direction and get fat, Usagi." Like 
that is something that slows down Usagi on her way to like go and fight and save all the girls from the evils of like anorexia style fitness centers. Yep. Like she she messes with her head and then she's like, oh god, I gotta get in shape and stuff. Oh no. She falls back into it. And it's like it's kind of cool too because like a lot of the time with other sorts of shows, you don't get to see your protagonist fall into whatever the evil people are preying upon, right? In like a very distinct concrete this is something that could happen in reality sort of way. She's a very human character. Yeah, I and guess like, that's really fair. As you said earlier, also a more age-appropriate character than many in other anime and just shows in general. Yeah, like, I, I gotta say I agree with that. And in general, in a lot of the episodes, she either nearly falls into things or does fall into them. Like, often enough. Like, even in the next one with the pets, she ends up, you know, like staring at the pets and then like almost gets tricked and Luna has to save her like it, it is kind of nice to see a hero that's just as vulnerable as the rest of us for lack of a better way to describe it for sure um this isn't gotten into so much in these episodes but that's going to be a reoccurring theme throughout this like Usagi's vulnerability is one of her strengths um, the fact that she can experience things that other people also experience is something that gives her empathy and that helps her out a lot. Yeah, like, I mean, even and to be fair, even in these first few episodes, at least somewhat, you know, maybe not isn't intensely, but like, she... She does really care. I'm not, I guess that's not fair either, because, like, even in this pet one, too, well, yeah, in the end, she tries to, like, trick her brother into making sure Luna can stay. Like, she wants to save her brother. Like, you know, it's really a, I, something is definitely wrong here. He's acting weird. I want to help him. Like, that's what starts it off. It's not always Luna being like, this is weird. We have to investigate this. Like, she's not completely, you know, unaware. A little ditzy at times, but not totally unaware. I mean, it's also a thing, too, that I've noticed as a difference between anime and children's cartoons in the United States, um, where there's a lot more of an emphasis on, like, how are you doing in school? Uh, like, yeah. Usagi cares intensely about the fact that she's doing poorly in school just can't motivate herself enough to change the facts although let's be real that's that's hashtag relatable so much gosh yeah and i mean like it's a whole thing where like you know i'm there was a plot line in american dragon where the main character got into trouble for ditching school too often and his attitude was like very ah don't make me do this and i don't even remember the resolution but it's just like it's interesting because like you don't see very many characters that actually care about school as weird as that is at least in comparison to American cartoons, I mean, minus really specific ones, like you might have a Dexter's Lab thing, you know, he's supposed to be a super genius, but I mean, you know, academics in Japan are extremely, extremely important because even getting into the right high school is, you know, a massive important part of their lives. And it is kind of interesting to get to see that, I guess, because a lot of the other anime, you know, that got super popular right when Sailor Moon did, you know, like Dragon Ball and stuff, that's, none of that's going on. They're, you know, going around beating up people all the time. It's kind of cool and lucky, at least in the States, that we got Sailor Moon when we did. Kind of like a really great thing, especially for girls growing up, but of course tons of boys too. Because believe me, I know so many boys who watch Sailor Moon, it's not funny. I mean, like I said, I went to Connors and then we would watch Sailor Moon, Powerpuff Girls, and Scooby-Doo, and usually fall asleep during Scooby-Doo. 
yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a great show in general. I, it is kind of cool getting to see it this many years later, you know? Like, like it, it brings so much back. I'm, I'm going to be excited, of course, when we eventually get into some of the harder episodes and stuff, but we're following this schedule thing. I know I mentioned this in the intro, but there's a big schedule on Reddit, so, like, if you're this far into this episode, for one, thank you. For two, you can probably catch up. This is the first episode we're recording, so go binge watch a ton, please. But um, <laughs> I'm kind of excited to get to see the big fights. Because even, you know, everyone talks about how Dragon Ball Z or whatever and all those things were getting popular at the same time, how much filler there was. And while they stretched a ton out in early Sailor Moon, I don't remember a ton of it just being straight up filler. Or even if it was, it was harder to notice because each episode was kind of its own thing without too huge of an overarching storyline, at least at first, you know. It's pretty episodic and there's all of these recaps at the beginning and end of each episode so that oh, yeah. like we, we you can about that. pick up anywhere at the beginning of every episode like i am like usagi and like it goes over like everything so which i'm just i'm surprised how dedicated they are into that like the first couple episodes i was expecting it maybe but like episode seven she fully introduces her character what she's doing and i don't know if this was also to fill up some time or not but like Especially for younger audiences, it's kind of a smart idea. I mean, it goes so far in depth as to give you her blood type and her birthstone for your own, like, being able to do sort of, um, I want to say astrology, but it's not astrology. It's just a different type of fortune telling where you can look at people's personalities Okay, so um, in some episode, we're going to have to look this up and see if our blood types Nicole? were compatible with Sailor Moon. Um, I will plan for this for the future, because that actually sounds really fun. It is pretty cool. <laughs> um, well, heck yeah, like, it is really neat there. Um, you know, we were talking about empathy, and this lets me slide into another episode really easy, but um, let me see, what was the title of that one exactly? Uh, here we go. Protect the melody of love. Usagi plays Cupid. Because, um, you know, I mean, this was a little bit back now, but talking about the whole empathy and understanding of a character, because I remember right when we watched this episode, like one of the first things we had just said out loud, because, you know, our memories are fuzzy. It's not like we remember every episode beat for beat, right? Was that guy looks a little scary. Um, like the romantic guy who's trying to get with this music lady producer person and how she just like is like okay whatever sure like d doesn't anything to him being weird is just like weird stuff's happening to you like cool story bro I'll help you out like it, there's just nothing to it she's just instantly there for him it's kind of refreshing you know yeah really? definitely I don't know maybe it's childlike naivete or whatever but like I mean it's um, one of the things that I think about a lot. Um, I draw Disney princesses for people on the internet and um, people have a variety of attitudes towards Snow White and people who dislike Snow White and people who like Snow White tend to focus on the same thing. And it's the fact that she immediately is there for and trusts the evil queen who's just dis in disguise and is like i'm gonna take care of you here have some water like i care about you towards a random stranger and like some people looking that are like oh she's so stupid but other people looking at that are like you know she cares about this random old person who you know yeah, it doesn't end up good for her, but she does something that, if taken out of context, is a very nice, good thing to do. And, like, she's a good person who cares about people, and that's why she has friends. Gosh, yeah, absolutely. And, of course, meets a very famous music artist and gets an entire album somewhat named after her. Remember, kids, be nice to everybody and you'll become friends with famous people. <laughs> okay, maybe bad lessons. Or just, like, be nice to people and you don't know 
where people will end up or what will come of them and you know there's karmic kindness in the world and you don't know what your good actions mean to somebody yeah that's that's pretty true i mean to be fair that is a very good lesson an actual good lesson unlike the one i made up and is goofy as heck <laughs> although wait no ren you were going to say something um I don't know. I lost it. It's, Dang. it's all good. It, it happens. Um. Um. Although there was the talent show episode. Oh yes. Um. Let me see here. Usagi learns her lesson. Becoming a star is hard work. I gotta <laughs> throw in those really long Japanese episode titles. They're wonderful. I love them. And also, like. I miss the Victorian style titling of things where like the entire plot of a chapter would be in the title of something. It would be like, so-and-so goes to the blah, blah, blah and learns a lesson about such and such. And it's like, cool. <laughs> what exactly happens there? I guess I will learn instead of it being like, or strife as a title for a chapter, which is just like, what am I supposed to get from strife? I'm just going to ignore this and read the chapter or, you know, pick up a different book. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's also interesting too, because like we watched these pretty close to when we recorded this and of all the things, like, I guess this is another one of those episodes that is really big, the Tuxedo Mask jumps in at one moment and throws a rose and saves the day, because, you know, she manages to get herself entirely encased in glass. Oh, goodness. But, like, uh, I, I don't know. Is it is it weird to say this episode feels less remarkable or crowded, maybe, is the thing? Because, I mean, there's tons of, like, not even just our main characters who are the friends at school, but tons and tons of side characters. But, like, the fight is also very, very simple. I mean, at some point we get some, you know... To be fair, you know, Tiara, magic action and all of that is how most of the early fights go. But I don't know. Maybe it's weird to me. This one is, like, the one that has struck me the least so far out of the initial seven. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe y'all can contradict my opinions or whatever. Well, I'd agree, but uh was not the most awake when I watched it. But it didn't <laughs> entirely <fair>. stand out. <laughs> Oh, you're saying that this was a snooze? Uh, I'm saying I am asleep. <laughs> Unrelated. That's pretty fair. Isagi was covered in ooze. It was a snooze. Oh, no. Ryan. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I will say that I liked some of, like, there, there were some nice nightscape type things but beyond that i wasn't super stoked on the episode overall like it's just kind of cutesy and like oh usagi helps this random dude it like it doesn't have the same level of usagi takes on an ill that is targeting her demographic levels you know, that the other part ones of do why, yeah especially after comparing the first few i mean yeah she's saving all of her friends who suddenly think they're famous or something but that's kind of it like if that's not as a comment of a thing i mean i guess there are like people who are be like i'm a fake talent scout but that's not something that i think most of us have ran into at least i, I never have <laughs> i think that too part of it is the level of like so there is very definitely a culture of preying on like girls who are looking to become famous for whatever talents they have right there's very definitely a lot of people around them that will use them for their youth and their skill sets yeah but the episode doesn't really go into any of that or how that works or how that's bad 
it's just like, oh, wow, they're stealing the energy and they're in a talent show. And then there's um, her one friend who um, previously... Uh, we've lost your audio. Oh, the one friend who previously was trouble because he's like got a crush on Usagi. Um, in drag in the episode, and it's just sort of like, okay, yeah, that's that's here. It's true. Yeah. You know, too, we won't get to do this as many episodes as we go in. However, as we talk about this episode maybe being a little eh, in the first seven episodes, three of them never aired in the United States. Uh. Yeah. So as we talk about us maybe not liking this episode, I think I'm going to force you two to play a bit of a game. So as three of these first seven episodes did not air in the U.S., I want you both to guess... Which three were not ever aired? And we'll see which ones you get right. Mm. You can just throw out numbers too. Don't worry. I won't make, or or the general what happened in the episode. We, we don't need to worry about the perfect titles. Because, you know, I, I can get that we probably didn't come into this with every title of every episode memorized. I'm reading off of notes. I might guess two, three, and seven. All right, Kai, what is your guess? Talent show, gym, and... Hmm. I don't know. Throw out a random number. One. That's a terrible choice. You know the first episode aired. Come on. I know that the first episode aired. <laughs> Obviously, that one is correct. I'll um, go with four so that I'm picking something different. All right. Here's the cool thing. Y'all only guessed one correct. Episode two was never aired in the United States. Now was episode five with the chanelas that are weird critters that smell with perfumes. Nor is the Protect the Melody of Love Usagi Plays Cupid. We never got the music episode. Uh-huh. Yeah, at least on the original Deke broadcast, apparently. Never came out in the U.S. There's a couple episodes that get skipped as the series goes on, too. But this is, like, the first chunk from what I was looking at. You know, my brief studying beforehand. Like, this is the one where the majority of, if we're skipping some, this happens. was in these very first episodes. Is no there any reasoning given? Because, nope. like, I mean, the Chanella episode has animal abuse? Maybe. But I mean, there's a lot of animal abuse in, like, Scooby-Doo, so I don't... I don't know. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, there is no reasoning or anything mentioned. Um, It's just, they just didn't air in the U.S. For whatever reason, they decided no on those ones, which is fascinating, because they don't do this as much as the series goes on, but right at the beginning, they're like, let's skip three of them. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. Maybe we'll have to, at some point, I can try to deep dive more before the next episode or whatever and see, like, if I can find it. But at the moment, it's just like, nope, there's just a few that just never did. And it's kind of interesting. Definitely. Well, heck, we've talked a lot about these first few episodes. Do we have any final words final comments before we say goodbye to our hopefully future loyal listeners <laughs> i mean just a little bit of the sympathy for her friend naru just constantly constantly being affected by all of this that's going on and remembering nothing of it that's oh that's rough Gosh, yeah, like... You gotta love a girl who never learns anything. The teacher, too. So much of this, the teacher's the first one to get hit. Like, dang, poor thing. I kind of love the teacher, too. Also, um, we haven't (laughs) talked about how sexy, respectively, Queen Beryl, Jadeite, 
or Usagi's oh. mom are. Oh yeah, and I, uh, the, I just want to say for the record <laughs> that I'm disappointed. Usagi's <laughs> mom is a milf. Um, no, no, no. Your exact quote while we were watching was, "It would be a mistake not to simp for Queen Beryl." Was the exact <laughs> quote. Do you disagree? <laughs> Look, I'm not sure. You've if seen I can the stage musical. <laughs> You've seen the stage hey, hey, musical. That's not what we're talking about here. We only have the first seven episodes of the original anime. The and musicals is not are Queen Beryl beautiful. <laughs> Look, and to be fair, she and radiant has some queer coding villain stuff going on. And I love her so much. Um, in short. Oh. Usagi's mom, ex Queen Beryl. Um, <laughs> wow, is... that's a that's a that's a cursed ship right there. Excellent. <laughs> <sighs> okay then. Well, with this and our various talks of simpery and terrible ships, unless we've got any more, I suppose I can close out. What the is everybody's with... favorite Usagi accessory so far? <sighs> There's not much to choose from yet. Although, I mean, I already commented on this. As silly as it is, it's the puns with supersonic crying radio powers. I don't even remember that being a thing in the rest of the series. So, like, just throw that in episode one, um, Roja. I love... The buns have that power, the little gems on her bun. And it also is the power in Jadeite's earrings. So, you know, excellent. You gotta, you gotta get your earpieces to talk to you. Um, this is the deep game theory lore. Jedites and <laughs> oh gosh. Also, I love that the radio host is Jade Ito. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah that, yes. that's, that's cute. It's so good. It's so good. Well, heck, y'all, we are almost at an hour of recording at least. So. I think, I mean, of course, there'll be some editing. Sorry to anyone listening. I know we don't always take everything perfect in one take. I'm destroying the illusion of <laughs> performance for everybody. But uh, I think... Uh, Nobody's perfect. I know. I, but I suppose this is a great place to wrap things up for now. Um, I hope y'all will tune in. We'll have one of these coming out weekly, other than there are a few rest weeks that are part of the Reddit schedule. I'll make sure that's linked where anyone can find it, because again, get in on it while you can early. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll say goodbye for now, and don't forget, the Moonlight is a messenger of Queen Barrel Simps. <laughs> <laughs>